everyone. Welcome back to RTS and welcome back to another segment of Rearrange the Stuff. Yes, and what are we going to talk about? Punches, 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 punches. That's what this entire video is going to be about, organizing punches, okay? And so what I'm going to do is, I don't know how long this will be, not even going to apologize for it because it's talking about organizing, learning something, reviewing something, cataloging something. It's going to be all that and a bag of Doritos. Yes, so what I'm going to do is the first part of this is going to talk about the actual product that I used and then the second is going to be the uh, how I use my catalog binder in conjunction with accessing these punches and then my third part is actually going to talk about configurations and the sizes of punches and why they give us a headache yes okay because I like to see visual and I know a year ago about a year and a half ago when I was thinking about uh, changing up the way I do my punches in order how I scrap I was looking for videos and I could only find about two that helped me so I want to show these configurations because not all of these are the same they really throw us for a loop. Yes, yes, throw us for a loop. Yes, a loop and a scallop and yes, a circles. Yes, they just throw us for a loop. So I know a lot of people don't like long videos and a lot of people don't like chit chat. So right off the bat, the product that I use for the most of my punches is a totally Tiffany product. And then the other thing I use is a big hat box. Okay, so now if you're not interested in anything else beyond that, there you go. <laughs> That's what it is. And this is what it looks like. It is a totally Tiffany product. All the links for everything I talk about will be below. So just hit that show more button, expand that description box, and there's the links for everything. Okay. So if that is all you wanted to know has how I am organizing my punches, there you go. Now for the rest of you, like me, who want to know the whole process, let's get cracking. Yes. Okay. So um, the product that I am going to talk about and the product that I have been using and trying out for the last, I'd say eight, nine months, something like that, is a totally Tiffany product. And uh, you know how I feel about Tiffany Spalding. I, I can't say enough about that lady. She is like awesome, awesome. Okay, and again, the information to Tiffany Spalding and Totally Tiffany will all be listed below. So the product I use for the majority of my punches, uh, my recent redo in the last year has been a totally Tiffany product and this is called a punch pack store and go and I mainly use the two inch size okay there are three sizes that Tiffany carries in her inventory of, of products and so the uh, the one is a one inch and that is about eight dollars okay now you will have seen that one inch and if you go to a Hobby Lobby, that's the one you're going to see. I don't get to big box stores very often. So the one inch was the only one I ever saw in person, okay? But I'm going to show you, when we talk about configurations, how that little one inch punch pack will help you when you go to organize your punches. Okay, so now you have seen the one inch because I recently did a video about organizing roller date stamps. I'll have that video linked below. And that is simply what this is. It is just a one inch. It's not very deep. It's just one inches. Okay. And so this, uh, I found at Hobby Lobby, used a coupon or half off. And so it goes for about $8. Okay. So if you have a Hobby Lobby and you want to see this in real life, this is what you do. Go to Hobby Lobby and see it. Some of you may have it in Joanne's or something like that. I don't know, but you can see a video and I talk about that these bags are really high quality for eight dollars on sale oh, you can't beat that no use those coupons okay and so then that is eight dollars for the one inch she also carries a one and a half inch which is ten dollars and then the creme de la creme is the two inch store and go bag and it is ten dollars and fifty cents and you'll notice that the price difference between the one and a half and the two is 49 cents so i say skip the one and a half inch go right to the two yes you're getting more bang for your buck and you're going to get that depth and it's cost more cost effective so that again i have been going through this for months okay i started researching this stuff over a year and a half ago and i'm just now getting ready to honestly say how i feel about it okay so what i did is a totally tiffany product again this is what the packaging looked like and on the website versus what the product and manufacturing info it says a couple different things okay but it's just a punch pack okay and so it's called a store and go it's also called a uh, punch pack supply pack something like that so a punch pack okay and there I'm going to talk about the product itself here so let me move okay I'll move this one here 
Okay, and I, I again, I used a two inch for $10.49. Yes, keep an eye out for those sales, which is exactly what I did. I honestly kept an eye out for the sales. I waited till I had a gift card and I waited for free shipping. That is how I did mine. Again, that took a little bit of time. This wasn't something I did overnight. This was months in the making. Okay, and I've been playing with it for about eight months. So, yes. Okay, so with this, this is the two inch size and you can see, I don't want to really move this, but it's just two inches in depth. Honestly, the best bang for your buck, okay? And so on average, you can get about 11 to 13 punches in a two inch store and go bag, okay? That's on average, okay? And I'm talking these type of punches. I'm not talking, let me pull out another bag here. And you might as well just get a drink. You might as well just settle in because it's going to, you know how I get. But this is just something I've spent a lot of time on because these things cost money. And I wanted to make sure I was getting what I needed and what I needed for the type of scrapbooker I am. And then also, too, I wanted to access my supplies. Okay. So, and we're going to have Velcro sound and we're going to have glare. So consider that a bonus in this video. <laughs> yes. Now, I'm not talking about these little punches and those little square punches. Do I have any of those? You know what I mean by those little square punches. And I'll pull them out in just a minute. But these little jobbies, okay? You definitely can get more than 11 or 13 in one of these if that was the what you were doing, okay? Because guess what? I did something different when I did my punches this time, okay? I've been in this game a long time, 23 years, folks. So I knew at this time, this point and stage in my scrapbooking journey, what I wanted out of a punch storage. And it wasn't by size. I wanted them by categories, how I scrap, okay? So I'm going to show that because I'm excited about that, okay? So... On average, when you're talking about configurations, because we have EK Success, we have Martha Stewart, we have Fiskars, we have Stampin' Up, we got it all, okay? There just takes, it just, punches is a headache. They're a blessing to have, <laughs> but boy, are they a booger to ever organize and to store, okay? So, I just want to say, on average, 11 to 13, okay? If this is a product you're interested in, okay? And let me just move this here a minute, okay? So if you watched my roller date stamp video, you will know what I said about these bags, okay? They are high quality, got a super Velcro. It's not cheap, okay? For the price, you can't beat. Honest to goodness, uh, good stitching, really heavy cording, uh, just adorable plastic. And then on top of that, Tiffany and her crew have the most awesome customer service, bar none. So you can't go wrong with that. And even if you, if you have any questions, just call them. Someone will pick up the phone and you can ask them anything. They're very knowledgeable, okay? And so that is enough fan gushing about Tiffany because I just think she's she's just all that. <laughs> yes, and she's a scrapbooker herself, so she knows what we needed. Okay, so for a long time, I kept looking and looking. And when it comes to organizing punches, I think there's a, basically you're down to three options. You are basically down to either organizing them on the wall I don't have the wall space, so that was never an option for me. Or you're going to put them in a drawer, and I've never had any kind of deep drawer, so that was never an option for me. So my third option, and it was my only ever option, was putting them on a shelf, okay? Now, you know, once you start putting uh, punches on a shelf, uh, you can't stack because then you can't access them. They slide, they fall over the place. And so I just had to keep going from different bins and baskets. And then about a couple years ago, I'd say about three years ago, I started putting them because I wanted them more contained and I wanted them more in categories. I started using 12 by 12 iris containers. <sighs> that worked. <laughs> Okay, I had them, so I didn't have any extra expense. I've had them, but they were very heavy. They were not portable, and long-term, I knew it was not going to be a solution. But in the interim, it worked, okay? But I knew I wanted something because I want to use my punch more, punches more. I want a spending free, so I have to use what I have, okay? And so that's why I ended up going with these punch and store bags by Totally Tiffany. Okay, so that is enough about the actual product itself. And then my second product I use is a hat box, Okay, and so I'm actually going to, if you want to hang on just a minute. Okay, I wanted to show sooner rather than later what I mean by a hat box. Okay, and a hat box is just exactly what it is. It's what people would store hats in, okay? And so I've had this for a long time. It is decor that actually is part of my space. But in this is where I store some punches. And I wanted to show this because I knew that this was something I was going to have to keep because punches are all different sizes and this is what fits my space. So when it comes down to uh, punches, it's not only what you want, it's also what you're going to have to be able to do for the space that you have. And then also, as Tiffany says, do you have a lot or do you have a little? And for me, I'm, I don't have a little, but I don't have a lot. I mean, I have enough. I got to 
you know, I had to figure it out. Okay, so this is what I mean by hat box. It sits under one of my chairs in my uh, scrap space. And so this is where I have <laughs> a lot of punches, okay? Now, why would I have punches in this and not in the punch pack? Well, because some of these just are not going to fit in any kind of container whatsoever. They just won't. And when we talk about configurations, I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. So I knew that this was something that I was going to have to keep. And I wanted to show this as an option because every time we want to organize something, what's the first knee-jerk reaction we do? We go buy something, okay? You need to just uh, do it the other way around. You need to see what for space you have okay and then how do you want to access them and then what do you already have that may work okay because there's no sense going out and just spending money if you don't need to okay if you have something in this container and if you shop at the Dollar Tree or Ross or Marshalls you'll you have seen these type of boxes okay and so I had this like I said it just sits under one of my chairs it's part of a decorative piece but look how many I didn't count how many there is <laughs> and over the years it has changed what punches have went in here and what punches have went out of here okay because at one time all my my punches used to fit in this okay that's the problem we keep buying and then we run out of room okay so of course you know my crimpers in here because where am I ever gonna put this it won't fit in any container okay so this is deep enough and so I wanted to give a measurement this is about 15 inches in diameter about six inches high okay it is a hat box that's what it is okay I used to have a collection of hat boxes back in the 90s I love I love the circle shape so I'm all there okay so then of course you have some couple extra corner rounders from my consulting days and then I have my We Are Memory Keepers, uh, my uh, Mini 8 punches. And then, of course, I have some of these bigger EK Success. And I have all of my uh, EK Six, or I'm sorry, Fiskers, all of these blue jobbies. Okay. I have all of them. Okay. Because um, they just won't fit in, in bags. They just won't. I have tried over the years. It just won't. And then these Martha Stewart ones that don't fold. Yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> Yeah, they're storage. Hard problems to store. And then these bigger EK Success punches. I'm going to show you an option for that. Okay. And then these. Yes, they fold. But oh my lord, are they big. Big, 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 big. Okay. So I'm going to talk more about this when we talk about configurations. But I wanted to give you a visual that I am down to when I did a redo of my punch storage I use two products. I use this hat box. So again, see what you already own. Maybe it's in a different part of your home that you could re reuse something. And if this is about all the amount of punches you have, you simply could use something like this. I will say right off the bat, what doesn't work in this is small punches, okay? You know, like there's little Martha Stewart punches or uh, I have one right here. Uh, this, uh, my EK Success. You can't put stuff like in that because that's what happened. It all goes to the bottom. So I've learned over the years, small punches doesn't work in a big container. No. <laughs> okay. Big containers, big punches. That's what you need to remember. Okay. So I just stick my extras in there. Okay. And so I just have my uh, crimper in there. So I have all my punches organized in two places. And then I'm going to have to show you, we run into another punch. And I'll talk about that more in configurations that won't fit in basically anything. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to pause again here and move this because it's it's very heavy. Again, this isn't something I bring to my desk. I just slide it from in and out of underneath my chair, but I already know what's in it. So the only time I need to ever look into it is when I'm actually reaching for something. Okay, so keep that in mind when you get uh, punch storage and it starts to get heavy. You're not taking it to your desk. It has to stay where it is on your shelf or in this case on the floor. Okay, I just wanted to give a visual about that because I've gotten some questions how do I organize punches okay so that's my hat box okay I will pause there and come right back and we're going to talk more about those store and go bags okay but don't forget to look what you already have okay honestly look what already containers you have and if you're like me you have a tote full of nothing but containers and then you go to it whenever you need a container okay so don't forget that I will be right back okay so now let's talk uh, the nitty-gritty about these punch bags and if you want to kind of skip about this and you want to see how I'm using this in conjunction of cataloging, you can just always fast forward a little bit. Okay. Because as I've been using these for the last, you know, eight or nine months or so, I've kind of lost track. Um, I have, you know, what I've liked about them and what there's just one downfall that I have found with these uh, bags. Okay. And so let me slide this over here a little bit. And I hope I don't have to stop and start because do you ever have those days where nobody in, nobody 
talks to you. And then you have some days where everybody and their brother wants to talk to you and you can't get a darn thing done. So that's the kind of day I'm having. It's like everybody wants a slice of me. Okay. So uh, for these punch bags, if you ever have watched any of Tiffany's videos, she shows that when she has them, that they're basically being used this way. Okay. But I don't have that height of a shelf. So for me, mine are going like this. Okay. So I would have to say the only downfall that I have found, and it's not that big of a deal, but it's something I do want to mention because it's something that I have found that I notice, is that this is what happens when you're pulling them off. See what happens? They're plastic. So it's not that they get stuck on each other, but they kind of have a little bit of a party going on there. And so they don't slide as easily as some, like a photo box. I use a lot of them. I'm so used to those things sliding on and off my shelf. These have a little bit of a, you know, um, it's not a hang up. It's just, it's plastic. Okay. It has nothing to do with the product itself. It's because of the type of product and it is plastic. So of course they're going to, they don't get stuck on each other, but they snuggle to each other. Okay. So you have to consider that. Okay. So this isn't something you would sandwich, 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 completely tight, tight on a shelf. You have to have a little bit of breathing room because of that. And then also too, because as I'm using these punches and I have them sitting this way, things shift. Okay. And so you have to consider that. Okay. So if you notice there, see my punches shift a little bit. So when you're getting them on and off a shelf, you have to have a little bit of uh, space and a little bit of breathing room because that stuff, it, like I said, it doesn't get hung up, but you do have to consider that. Okay. They don't slide as easy as a photo box. Not that they slide hard. Again, they shift. Okay. Now you'll see that on some of the videos that I have seen where the, the ones that don't shift, Okay, let me just show. Okay, and I'm going to be moving everything, but that's what we're doing today. It's all by punches. Okay, now here is a one inch. I only have one of these one inch packs because I, I had this, I already had it, and I wanted to um, keep some of these EK Success punches in there. I'm going to talk more about this, about the actual punches. Um, but you notice how when, I, when you put it this way, or if you put it this way, they don't shift. Why? Because they're basically all the same size and the same height. Okay. So when you're thinking about this type of system, you can absolutely try to organize punches by size and then you'll have less of, less of that shifting. But I know for me, because I try that, that's not how I want my punches. I want my punches how I use them. Okay. So I have to put up with a little bit of shifting, but that means when I go for my hard punches, all my heart punches are in one bag. Okay. So you have to consider that. Okay. Now these don't shift. Why? Because they're all the same size, but I would much rather, I would like to have a couple of those in with other groups, but it just doesn't work that way. Okay. And I'll talk more about that when we talk about cataloging. So just keep that in your mind because I knew that they would shift, but I kind of almost didn't think they would shift, if that makes sense. Because when I first started this a year ago, I put all those little punches in, you know, they're like squares and rectangles. And yeah, when you can figure that in a square or rectangle, no, they're not going to shift. But not all of our punches are square and rectangle. So you will have shifting, regardless if you stand them or you sit them like this. Okay, you're going to have shifting. Okay, just something I wanted to say. That's the only thing I have found that was a little bit of a consideration. Not that I would have not par purchased them if I knew that. I still would have done it. Okay, but I just like, oh yeah, they don't slide off the shelf as easily as what I thought they would. However, also consider this is plastic. And you know what happens when you sit on something hot and plastic? You know what happens, okay? <laughs> yes, things get stuck. Okay, and so... um also, too, I have found that the more I use them, they get less plasticky, plasticky, <laughs> you know what I mean? So once you, when you first get them, it's plastic, you know, but then after a while, it gets easier and easier. Okay, just consider that, okay? That's probably a little bit of rambling, but, you know, I just want to be full disclosure, yes, okay? Because someone would say, oh, well, they stick on the shelf. Well, it's plastic, it's going to stick, but, you know, after a while, they're going to get some uh, hand oil, and they're going to get a little bit of dust. They, they'll they move a little bit easily. Okay, so now let's talk about, what, what are we going to talk about next? Okay, I'm just going to show you a few uh, bags I have here and what I have in them. Okay, let's just do that. Okay, and then we'll talk about the cataloging. Yes, we'll get into that. Okay. So, what do I have here? And I want to show... Again, I should just move this one. It's getting in my road. If you will see here... Now, this is my circles. Okay. And I'll talk about that when I'm cataloging. But if I open this up... 
you see that this has a number. This is my number one, okay? I do have them numbered, okay? And you're gonna see in my catalog binder why they're numbered, okay? Easy to do, okay? And so what I did with my punches is is I went, I went by, I went by how I wanted them when I go to scrap. I didn't want them by size. I wanted them by categories. Okay, and again, that took a little bit of thought process. Okay, so what do I have? I have everything you can imagine, and you can see what I'm saying things shift, especially see because I have big in with the little, and I, that's just the the price I have to pay if I want them by categories. I mean, that's just what else are you gonna do? Okay. Of course, I've been moving these things back and forth because I'm doing a video, so it isn't normally always this bad. But you know, when you're doing a video, you got to pull a ton of props. Okay, so of course you can see I have different punches. I have Welva punches. I have some McGill punches. I have little paper shapers. I have a new We Are Memory Keepers that uh, plan a reinforcer hole and things like that. So I have different sizes and different manufacturers. Okay, and again on this one, you can see I have some Martha Stewart again Welva punches, and then. Um, I forget who made these. Um, was that Queen and Company? No, Imagine these. Remember that? And you could cut them out. So that's a nice, that's got a nice width to it. Okay. We'll talk more about that in configuration. And so I have Martha Stewart's and then EK Success, things like that. So it does fit a variety of punches. Absolutely. And what else? I have another one here. And I showed you this one. So this is some edge punches. Okay. That's some edge punches. And you can see they're portable. I'm mean, taking them back and forth between my shelf and to my desk. And so instead of me having to go to my shelf and try to find uh, three of my circle punches, I now have all of my circle punches it, on a tray. I slide out and there we go. Love that. Okay. And that's what I wanted when it comes to punch storage. So again, I have some border punches here. Now you can see that I have a couple of these stacked because I wanted to make the most use of this two inches uh, tray. Okay. And so that's what I did. Now this one, I have a couple that will no longer shut. Okay. It never did shut. And so I have to sit it like that. Okay. But even standing up or sitting down, it still fits in that bag. Love that. Okay. What else do I have? Okay. Let me just move this. Okay. And of course I showed, I'm going to get glare. That's okay. And then of course I showed some of these flat EK success. So you're saying, well, that only holds about five punches. Well, you keep it, get probably something else in there. Okay. But again, I went by category. Okay. But we're going to talk about that when I talk about configurations. Okay. And so then let me see what else I can. Oh, let me go pull another one here. Okay. So now in this one, okay. And I'm probably running out of room. Let me move some things. In this one, you can see I have Paper Studio from Hobby Lobby. I have American Crafts. I have Fiskers, Martha Stewart, uh, Teresa Collins. I have McGill. <clears throat> sorry. So I have a little bit of it. <coughs> I'm sorry. I have a little bit of everything in there. So I'll pull this out just a minute. And again, we're going to talk more about configurations because I think that's the hardest part when it comes to organizing punches of the configuration. So you can see with these Fiskers and these paper studios, you know, they get some width to them and these Martha Stewart's and we all basically have these. Okay. That works very well in these two inches. Okay. You can do it like this. Or you can do it like that. Now, again, I'll talk more about that. Okay. I just want to give you a visual of how many, and again, about 11 to 13. How many do I have in here? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, 12. 11 to 13 was the going rate when, when I organized, was organizing what I found. Okay. And so again, a variety of of manufacturers, a different variety of sizes, a variety of depth, okay? That's why I went with the two inch because I knew I was going to have a variety of punches in one tray. So I went with the two inch, okay? And again, they go in so easy. This bag is very durable. It's not cheap. It's going to hold up. And if there would be a problem, you know, you just pick up the phone and call Tiffany and the crew. Yes. I can't say that enough. I love good customer service and they have it. Okay. Again, really nice Velcro. Okay. And then you'll see here, I should have showed that. I have that. I have a number four on there. Okay. Because I have all of them cataloged. Okay. And I did, when I did my catalog, I, had, I did it in the easy way. I didn't want to number each one of my punches. Okay. So that is what, uh, I'll, I'll show one more. Why not? We're talking punches. Yes. Yes. Okay, so this is another one I have. I'll take it out of the bag here. 
And of course I have this number two. And with this one, again, I have my clouds. I have them in three sizes. I have them in there. And then now with this one, because of how many I wanted to get in here, you'll see my, my, my Martha Stewart ones are on the side. Okay. And that will, again, we'll talk about that on configurations, but this is my heart and my clouds. Love having them all in one tray. Yes. I mean, look at that. I have them all. There's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, there's nine, nine in there. Okay. Now these are the well of the punches and you know, these uh, take up space, okay? But that's, I mean, try to get the all nine of those on a shelf and then try to access them. It doesn't work, no, okay? So I love that because you know, on a shelf, you could do this with these, okay? You could stack those and that has worked, but that's not, not the best system. These you can always stand, okay, on a shelf. You know, we've done that. Stand them on a shelf. That works, but then you have to move four to get the one in the back. We know that. These, well, you just have to have them in a basket or bin because they get lost. And these, they take up space and they do not stack. So, just with these four different punches, four different manufacturers, you had to come up with four different ideas and four different ways to organize them. So, with this, I'm glad, okay? I am absolutely glad I can get them in, okay? I probably won't be able to figure out how I get that back in. <laughs> But it's not that hard, okay? Because when I'm working with these, I only have to worry about organizing a few. You know, what do I what did I say I had nine or ten here? I only have to worry about working, reworking these nine or ten when I put them back in the tray, not thirty on the shelf. And you know what I mean by that. Okay, so I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'll stop here. And then we're going to start talking about cataloging, okay? Because that was something that I would say once you figure out your configurations, okay? Uh, we're going to talk about cataloging. But I'm going to do configurations last because uh, some people may not just simply want to see that, okay? So let's talk about cataloging and how I use these totally Tiffany trays, punch and what they call punch packs, and how I use it in conjunction with my catalog binder, okay? So hang on. I'll be right back. Okay, so now let's settle in and let's talk about cataloging our punches because it doesn't matter what container you use, you know, and previously I showed the uh, punch packs by Totally Tiffany, doesn't matter if you use those or not. Having your punches in a catalog is just awesome. Yes, because when I sit down to create a page, I want to spend time creating the page. I don't want to spend time gathering the supplies to create the page, okay? And I know a lot of you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so the gist of it is, is that whatever you see in my bag, and let me just pull one here. Whatever you see in my bag is what you're going to see here. Whatever you see here, you're going to see in my bag punch bag okay except there's a couple exceptions and I'll talk about that in just a minute and so that is simply what it is and so I have this punch bag one and I know this is punch bag one because I just showed you earlier I have them labeled on the side okay and so what did I do I simply took basil cardstock and I punched shapes with every single punch I own okay now that takes time so don't expect to do it overnight it's a weekend project or when you have a little bit of time here and there that's what I do okay I would do about six punches at a time that's what I did Okay. And so then why did I use basil cardstock? And so when I say when it comes to organizing, there's a thought process, there truly is a thought process. Okay. And so when you're doing a catalog, whether it's punches or anything else. Okay. Now in this catalog binder, I know someone will ask, what do I have? Okay. I have punches and then I have embossing folders and then I have all my slice information. Okay. I'm still old school. I still have my slice machine. <laughs> That's about as high tech as I get, girls, okay? And then I have my dies, okay? But I'll talk about that later. I'll do a flip through, but today is just punches, okay? So I have this on cardstock, okay? And I simply used basil cardstock as my as my cardstock to punch my shapes, okay? I'm sorry, I feel like my words are just not coming today. <laughs> That's not good. Okay. So here's punch bag one and punch bag two. And so then when you flip over, what do you see? Nothing. Okay. I can't recommend that enough. When you are doing a catalog system, don't put anything on the back. Okay. Do an individual sheet for each individual sheet. Okay. Don't put anything on the back. I learned years ago that supplies come and go, supplies changes, your style changes. And so if you had to rework something, you only have to rework one page rather than two pages. Okay. So put them back to back. Don't put anything on the back. 
okay? And so you'll see punch bag one, two, three, four, and so forth. It goes up to nine. I have nine of these punch bags. And so you know I have them labeled, okay? So I use basil cardstock, and then what I did is I went and I punched every punch I owned, okay? And do that in, in batches, whatever you have time. And then what I did was I kept them in individual baggies, if you have this already set up, okay? And that's, where I, and that's why I'm talking about configurations coming up, because I honestly think that configuring how you're going to organize your punches comes first because of all of this. But I know some people just don't want to see that, okay? So I put that at the end. But um, if I had it my way, I would have put configurations first <laughs> in this video, okay? But I know when people go to search for videos, they don't want chit-chat. They want to see results, okay? So I punched whenever I had, well, I knew what was going in one pu what punch bag. I simply punched everything, put it in an individual sandwich bag because I wasn't going to get to it for a while. And then you could label it a punch bag one or you could put circles and clouds or whatever. Whatever you know when you need to set up your sheet, what's in the bag, okay? Now, I didn't put anything on my bags because I only had nine bags. I could have figured out what was what, okay? And so then why would I use basil cardstock? And I'm going to move this because of the glare. Because basil cardstock in my style is the heaviest cardstock I use. And so that I know that if a punch would work with that, it's going to work with everything else I own. So I went with the hardest material first, okay? Because there, don't do it in copy paper, okay? Because that won't help you. Because as you're doing this system, okay, you're going to find punches. I just had that here. You're going to find some punches that just don't work very well. Or you're going to find some punches you don't like. Or you're going to find some punches... I just had that here. You're going to find some punches. I'm just, oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking for something. You're going to find some punches that take six punches till you get the right one. I mean, it's just, that's just the way it goes. So as you're going through and you're punching your punches, okay, you're getting images of your punches. I'll say it that way. When you're getting your images, if you find something you don't like, go ahead and purge it. If you find something that's not working and it's just a bad punch, because that does happen, we do get bad supplies, throw it away. Don't give it the headache to someone else, okay? Or you can just remember that when it goes to use that punch, it may not be the easiest. I only had one punch. Uh, let's see, did I purge any on this round? No, I didn't purge any because I had done that a couple years ago. And I'm on a spending freeze, so I don't want to give up anything right now. And this was the only punch that gave me fits, was this one here. Love this. I'm not going to get rid of it because I love it. But I do know that this is, a, this is a hard punch. Look, it took me six tries to get a good one, okay? And then I noticed, um, I have a note here right stamping up. I wanted to ask for something. I have to remember. Okay. So while you're doing this, you're not only just doing a catalog, you're also um, basically using every one of your punches so you can't feel guilty because you're using them, okay? And then also, too, you're weeding out the ones you don't like, and then you're getting rid of the ones that don't work. How's that for a three-for-one? Yes. Now, I wanted to give a visual. When I set up my catalog, and I have about nine or ten pages here, no, 11, 12, something like that, I used about eight pieces of these 12 by 12 cardstock and basil, okay? Now... I'm going to say one thing. I went with all one color because because I know a good way to do this would be to use scraps. But I noticed for me, and over the years, when I sit down, because I use my catalog binder more than I do some other things. So I wanted it to look nice, and I wanted it to look linear and cohesive, and also to um, everything be consistent. Because that's that makes my brain calm down a little bit, okay? But you certainly could use scraps for this. You could do it however you want. I just kept it with this butter yellow because that's how I decorate my room, <laughs> is in butter yellow and uh, black and white. So I have, I have it all covered. Okay, but again, you could certainly use scraps. But if I had these shapes in multicolor, say if this was pink and this was blue and this was orange and this was yellow, I think it's harder to see the actual image in conjunction with other images if, rather than if you kept with one color throughout. Okay, because when you're looking at this, I'm not looking at color, I'm looking at images. Okay, but take for a moment, if this was all different colors, you would see the color. Okay, so when you're setting up a binder, I personally feel that when you keep your image in the same color, that's going to be more helpful to you in the future when you're looking through your catalog than to use scraps. 
okay? That's just my personal opinion, okay? Because I've learned from that, okay? Because believe me, I've used a catalog system for some many years, okay? And so then uh, about five or six years ago when I decided to go with one color, yes, I'm using about eight pieces of basil cardstock, but it's better to be in my catalog binder than to be sitting on a shelf. Yes, it's still using it. It's not landing on a page or a card, but I'm still using it. That's all that matters. Okay. And so then I just adhere these on cardstock. Again, eight and a half by 11 cardstock. I did not use copy paper. That will not work long term. Use your cardstock. And then, of course, I use my quick dry. Okay. Because these images are too small. You cannot use an ATG gun. You cannot use a tape runner. You need to use a liquid glue. And if you have a fine point, that's even better. And I use this quick dry on every one of these images. Okay. And so then they just go back to back. And I think that's all I wanted to say as far as actually punching. Do it in batch processes. Put it in baggies if you have to. And then this all doesn't happen at one time. Because if you would punch a shape and then you come over here and try to put it here and then pull out another punch, punch a shape, you know, punch an image and then put it over here. No. Do all your punches and then do all your adhering. It goes much, much quicker. Okay. So that goes in that page protector. Okay, so now let's talk about categories because I'm going to show you what I used to have. Uh, and I had it for, you know, several years. I'm just going to put these back in because I put time and energy into this. I want to keep it protected. Okay, and so, of course, it's just copy paper in a page protector in a binder. That is how simple this is. Use a binder you already have. Okay, now I kept this on here because I knew someone would ask me. This is just an Avery clear, clear cover, heavy duty. I do recommend that. And does it tell me the size? I think this is a two inch. I tried to keep that on there because I knew someone would ask me. Okay. Now, of course, you know, when you're buying a binder, if you want to get these one touch jobbies where you just, it's a one touch, uh, that does save your fingers a little bit, you know, you can definitely do that. I do suggest ones that have pockets. Okay. And I'll talk more about that when I actually do a flip through of this, okay? And, but first of all, use what you have. That's what I did for a long time, okay? But the heavier your binder is, the more hard it's gonna be used. So keep that in your mind, because I did that mistake too. Do not use a three inch binder for your inventory. You may have to break things up, okay? So uh, let's talk about the groups, okay? So the groups I have, and oh, let me just show you what I used to have, because I kept them, I didn't throw them away, okay? So what I used to do in my old binder is that I just had a category and it would be everything for shapes, okay? And I just had them. There's one. Let me see if I can find another one. I just simply had, this is what I had, okay? So this was good because it told me, or showed me rather, what I had, but it didn't tell me where to go to get it. And that's what I ran into. And so then I knew after doing this system for a few years, I needed to fine tune it a little bit more because I say if I wanted this heart punch, well, where am I going? What shelf was I going to? What bin? What basket? Okay. And then after a while, you know, I started to put things in iris uh, containers and that worked as far as containing and knowing where they were, but it wasn't portable. It was so heavy. I had to move two to get the one that will never work for me. I've learned that. Okay. And so then again, that's all I simply did was I just took my punches and you can see they're just on the images are just on the paper. There's no, there's no rhyme or reason other than that's labeled border. And this was labeled shape. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, I needed to fine tune my system. Uh, and so then that's what I've been working on in the last year or so. Okay. So now what I did is rather than just be on one sheet, all these images, I decided to go by category because, you know, the longer you get into this, the more you know what you need and you know what your style is. I wanted them by group, okay? So if you look at uh, punch bag one, and of course I have it labeled on the side one, I can see that. And I have my circles and my hexagons, okay? So before, I would have containers that whatever would fit, like my small ones would be in one container, my big ones would be in another container. And then if I wanted to use a variety of circles on a page, I had to go here, I had to go there, aggravating. So now when I want circle punches, guess what? I have them all here on one tray that is now portable and it is labeled and it is catalog. Okay. Now, does it take some time to set this up? Yes, but not, it's not, it doesn't take that long. Just do it in batches, you know, uh, can figure out what you want in a bag first and then do your shapes, you know, your images, and then you do your adhering. Okay. But, uh, give it some time, do it once and do it right. Okay. And so then of course, with my second one, Okay, so in my first bag, I went by my circles because I have a lot of circles. And then also, too, you'll see in this group that I have hexagons, but they're not in this bag. 
Okay. Now, would that make sense for some people? No, but it did for me because I needed a representation of my hexagon punches, but my hexagon punches are on my desk and they've been on my desk for, I'd say about a year and a half. And I don't see me changing that anytime soon. So for you, it may be something else. It may be uh, maybe a certain heart punch or a certain edge punch. It's just something we go to. And so I wanted the representation here with my circles because it's kind of like my go-to punch. But yet when I put these away, if I get tired of them, I'll put them in this punch bag and I'll probably take out some circle ones. So that's why I did that. So again, when I say something's a thought process, I truly mean it. Okay. I wanted my representation on here, but they're not in this bag. Okay. But I know when I'm done with them, they will go in this bag and something in this bag will be coming out. Okay. So now let's go to punch bag two. Okay. Punch bag two. What do I have? I went, my, went with my hearts and my clouds. Okay, so whatever you see in this bag is what you see here, other than one, which is a honkin' Martha Stewart uh, punch. Okay, and it's honkin'. It will not fit in these bags, okay? But the representation is here along with my other hearts, okay? And when I talk about configurations, I'll talk about where that punch is at, okay? So now let's go to three, because I'm just showing my catalogs or my groupings. Uh, I'm just showing my categories right now. So in punch bag three, which is my favorite number, okay? <laughs> Now, this is how corny I am. Okay, go with me. So, uh, punch bag three. Three is my favorite number, okay? And so, what would be a number three? Well, what do I love? Floral. So, my florals are in number three. <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I, I do. I what thought process. That's all I'm going to say. Because I know I don't even have to look for the number three. I can go to my shelf. I see which one's three in a row. I know that's where my florals are, okay? And so, if you see here... Whatever you see here is what you're going to see in this bag, except one honking Martha Stewart punch that will not fit in these bags, okay? And I'll talk about that. So there's all my florals. And so I have my florals and my stems. Okay, so then what we have in punch bag four, okay? And I'm not going to pull the punch bags because what you see in the punch bag is what you're going to see here. In my punch bag four, I have butterflies and then I have my crown, my crosses, butterflies, bows, so and feathers. So I call it a court, like a... Feathers and uh, fauna, that's what I kind of call that. And sometimes when you're setting up your categories, and we'll talk about then configurations, is that it's basically what's going to fit in your categories as to what fits in that punch bag, okay? But for the majority, I wanted to keep, like, my hearts together, my clouds together, my circles together, my flowers and stems, my butterflies, things like that, okay? And I think feather goes in with birds and butterflies, okay? So that's what I have. I have bows, birds, and butterflies, <laughs> And group and, and punch bag four. And there is no wrong way to do your categories. It's how you want them. Okay. And you may simply go by what just fits and just do that. But I know when I pull out my butterfly, I want all my butterflies. When I pull out my heart punches, I want all my heart punches. When I pull out my circle, I want it all my circle. So this time, when I decided last year, when I decided to do some research how I wanted this, I knew that is what I wanted and that was what I was going for. Okay. And so then in five, I have directional. I have my, my arrows and then I have some stars and corner punches again. And then I have my cherry, uh, cherries in my mason jar. So, you know, things like that. And then punch bag six, I have um, tickets and tags and banners and things like that. And then in punch bag seven, I call this my seasonal and scallops because I have two scallop punches and the rest of these are seasonal. That's how I did that. And punch bag eight was tags. And then I had a couple extra space that I put some Martha Stewart edge punches in. And I was going to say, where is that at? Number eight. Oh, do I have that here? Oh, uh, yes. Where is my number eight? Where is my number eight? Oh, dear Lord in heaven. Oh, yes. I have it right here because this is the one I wanted to talk about. Okay. So I have this here because the reason why I wanted to put, make sure these were in a bag because I, I just didn't want them sitting on a shelf. And so then I had some extra space. So I went ahead and whatever was smaller that fit in here, I just pulled these three ones because they were small and they fit. So sometimes when you're setting this up, it's not having everything by catalog. Sometimes it's what's going to fit. Okay. And this one, I had some, um, you know, my label punch and tags. And then these Martha Stewart's, uh, because they're the smaller edge punches. So they fit in this bag. So that really wasn't a category. It's kind of what fit. Okay, that's what I wanted to show. And then, of course, in my punch bag nine, which I had showed that earlier, that is all, I think there was, what, 12 or something like this? 
Okay, and there's another one that goes in here, but I have it in a kit right now for my counterfeit kit in my fall pages in our 444 series. And so I'm playing with that right now. So all of this is right here. I, I can't, I mean, which is easier to look at? If you wanted to honestly go get an edge punch, which is easier to look at? This or this or pull out a big old basket and try to find them. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yes, I love this, okay? Now, um, you'll notice, and I might as well talk about that now. You'll notice, okay, let me just pull this. I'll get, bear with me a minute, I'll get rid of some of this glare. You'll notice that when I have my uh, catalog here, these images are not numbered. No, because I did that at one time. That took a little bit of, <laughs> that took a little bit longer, okay? I do not need my punches numbered because my bag is numbered. So again, I went the lazy way. Yes, I did. I wanted to number nine bags, not 90 punches, okay? So if you look in my catalog, and I'll slide this over, in my catalog, none of these are, these images are not numbered. Just my page is numbered. Like this says punch bag number nine. This says punch bag seven, punch bag number eight, okay? And then I just go because I have no trouble. Say I want this uh, photo a slide frame uh, punch. I have no problem looking here at 10 or 11 and I see it's right there. I do not need this numbered four within this. Now I wanna say one thing, that Tiffany Spalding, when she has showed these before, she has showed that whenever you get these configured and you put them in, she did a copy of that image. I don't need that. Here's my image. I see what I want. Say if I want this X and O's. Well, yeah, that was real hard. <laughs> yes. So I do not have my punches numbered at all. I do not have my images numbered at all. I simply just have my bag numbered. I mean, how hard is it to count to nine? How hard is it to cut out numbers one through nine and put them on there? And that's all I did. And I'll show it on this one. All I simply did was I took a die and I die cut number one through nine. I ran them through this little Xyron <laughs> and I just adhered them to the tray. I mean, it's so simple. It doesn't, like I said, it's the lazy way. Yes, I did not number. And plus, I'm going to just be very frank and very honest. I do not want a black number on my punches. No, especially my Martha Stewart's. I don't want anything on them. <laughs> I don't want to take a Sharpie to my punches. No, a couple of these you have to because this gets, I don't mind that, but I don't want my punches marked up. No, I'm very funny about stuff like that. Okay, I want things to look as new and clean as long as I can. <laughs> yes, okay, so again, I did not number my punches. I did not number my images. I simply just have one number for my punch bags, okay? So let me move this for a minute because we're gonna keep on talking about catalog. So that is all my nine punch bags, okay? And you saw what they were earlier. Okay, so now what do we go next to? In my catalog binder, and this was something I learned years ago, and I couldn't even tell you where I remembered. None of this is my idea. I don't take credit for anything. It's that I did a circle template. So I'll pull this out. And again, you know, I had said earlier, don't put anything on the back. No, do a single sheet for each one of your catalogs and catalog sheets. And so I did a template. So I punched every one of my circle punches and my scallops and there's my oval and I made a template. So if I needed to, you know, like if you're putting this on a layout, oh, I want this size or I want this size. And I simply just put a piece of uh, cardstock here. It's adhered on three sides. That's all it is. It's not really a pocket. It's just an opening. Okay. And I keep that in there. Now I will tell you that, you know, I've been scrapbooking a long time, so knowing what two inches is, what one and a quarter inches, I don't really need to know that. And honestly, I don't think I've ever used this other than one time when I was making a, uh, I was making a great, a big batch of Christmas cards and I wanted to make sure I got the right size instead of punching a bunch, okay? So I've only ever referred to this about one time, but it's still something nice to have and to include it on, so it's just a circle template and I, have all my circles because that is the shape punch I think all of us use the most. Well, I don't know, my hexagon punches, they're in the running. <laughs> yes, okay. So that is just simply a piece of black paper, which was a scrap, and I adhered it with my ATG on three sides and this is just an opening, okay? Easy peasy. Okay, let me put this back in. Don't want anything to come up missing. Okay. So then the next thing I have for my punches is that I have doily punches. Now I only have four of them, so I wanted them represented and I'll take out the glare. And so I did this in pattern paper. 
so I could actually see the image I thought turned out better because it, I originally used my basil cardstock and uh, I did this years ago and I have never changed it okay and I just did them in uh, paper so I thought the image stood out a little bit better. And so there's my four doily punches. And those are those We Are Memory Keepers, um, what are they, mini eight punches. And so I have them represented. Yes, every punch I own is represented in this catalog in some form or fashion. Yes. Okay. And again, this is just a continual process because in the beginning I showed you. All I simply did in the beginning, beginning, in the beginning, beginning, is I simply just had a sheet that showed me the punches. Okay, now I show the shapes, you know, the images, and now I know where to go to get them. Okay, and these are just in that hat box. Okay, and then here we go into my border punches. Okay, and so I have every one of my border punches represented here, represented and represented. Okay, so let me talk about something when we talk about punching images. Okay, now let's talk about the ones that are small. You definitely go ahead and punch them, stick them there. If you have something that will give you a negative space and you think you may use that negative image, go ahead and punch that out because this is a Martha Stewart punch. And when you punch it, all of these hearts, how many is there? Five, seven hearts. So go ahead and cut out that negative image. So then if you want to use that further down the road, you could use that too. Okay, don't be afraid to include something one or more than once. And some of your smaller ones, like these Martha Stewart hearts, it's okay to have two or three of them because one may get lost, punch two or three of them. I think I did that again. Yes. So here on these little um, arrows, I punched three of them to give me the image. Okay, one would get lost. And the same way for these leaves and flowers, I punch three, punch two, punch two. It gives you, I think, a better image if you punch more than one if they're going to get lost. Same here with my anchors, I punch two, these little bows, punch two. So on your little images, punch more than one. You'll be easier to see on your catalog sheet. I learned that the hard way too. <laughs> yeah, please learn from my mistakes. Okay, so the same way when it comes to edge punches, okay? Now we all have some of those edge punches, especially I think Martha Stewart is the one more known for that, is that you just flip a button and then you get two images from that edge punch. So when you're doing your catalog, make sure you represent both of those images, okay? And do it back to back, okay? So if I turn the button on one, I get this. If I turn the button, I get this, okay? And so include both of them, okay? Now these aren't put in any kind of, um, in a, a in order of, by any means. This is just my border punches because I have border punches in one place and that's in that hat box. So I don't need to know anything other than border punches because I know where they're at, okay? I could have definitely put on here hat box, but I don't want that. They're just my border punches, okay? So that is how I did my border punches, okay? And again, then if you have some edge punches, you know, your border edge punches that give you an image within an image like the chevron right here, I absolutely punch some of those out and I layered them on top of this. So that gives me the representation that I may be not want the edge, maybe I want the shape, okay? And I also, at the very end, I included my crimper because it's not a punch per se, but I can use it with my punches and that's the category I put it in. I put it in with my punches, okay? So I hope that gave an idea of how I did that as far as the cataloging. And I'm trying to think of any other question I had. Okay, so as far as my punches in my catalog binder, that's all I have. Okay, how many sheets is that? How many page protectors? One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> okay, so there's, I only have, uh, yeah, five page protectors. And that is my entire punch collection stash inventory right there. Now, tell me that it's not easier to look at these five pages or ten sheets, however you want to call it, than to look at all your punches at one time. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. So I love this because if I sometimes I have to challenge myself to pull out a punch or sometimes I know what I want, now I know where to go. And I know I have by groups of catalog. Uh, I have them in groupings now. So when I pull out circles now, I don't have to say, well, which circle punch do I want? I just go get my circle punches. Or if I want a butterfly, I don't have to sit here and say what size butterfly I want. I just go to punch bag four and I get all my butterflies at one time. I can't recommend that enough. All my florals, yes, yes. My directional pieces, yes, okay. And then all my seasonal ones, yes, love that. Okay, so that as far as, I think that's all I wanted to say about the cataloging part of things. If there is something more that you want to see or you want me to talk about, just let me know. Or if there's any questions you have about the cataloging, just list it below, okay, because I have done this a few times. Oh, one question I did get. And what do you do when you 
have a catalog system set up and you get rid of something or you purge it or if you add to. Okay, so let's talk about that for a minute. So if you get rid of something, what you simply can do and what I have done before in the past is uh, my, I gave my sister a few punches one time. So I came and I just put a big old X over that and that's what you do. <laughs> that means you no longer have it. There's, there's no sense reworking a sheet and say, no, I no longer have that. Just put an X over it. Then you don't no longer have it. Okay. You don't need to redo the sheet. Just put an X over it. Okay. So then what do you do if you need to add something? Okay. Because that is something I took in consideration. Same way with these shape punches. Say I no longer had this Martha Stewart. Put an X over it. I no longer have it. Now it marks up your sheet, but that's activity, baby. <laughs> don't worry about that. That means you've been in here working and using something. Okay. So what do you do when you need to add two? And I did take that in consideration when I was working with these, okay? Because in my punch bag number eight, I think, it's my seasonal one. No, I'm sorry, number seven. I do have more space here. So if I add some punches, that's probably where it's going to go. But I want a spending freeze, so I don't foresee me adding anything uh, in the near future. And I will say that right now. If you want to get a handle on what you have, you need to stop shopping for a bit. I'm just going to be honest. I have been there, done that. You can't set up a catalog system if you're bringing in punches and dies and embossing folders every other week. Because then all you're going to do is be working with this. You're not going to be working with the actual punch, die, or stamp. You're going to be working on this okay so give yourself a little uh, break give yourself a cool down period and don't shop for whatever you're organizing don't shop until you have it organized and then you'll know what you need and what you don't need what you have too much of and then you can spend your money a little bit more wisely okay so I wanted to say that so for uh, room to grow in my punch bag number seven I have a little bit of room to grow and even on my sheet I can still add to and then also too when I did my border punches here I have room to grow here I don't foresee me buying anything I should not be buying anything but it's inevitable we always buy something so I have room to grow okay so I wanted to add that so I think that is all I have for the cataloging part so come back maybe tomorrow later on today grab a cup of coffee and now let's talk about the configuration of these punches in these totally Tiffany uh, punch uh, pack bags because that was something when I was researching this last year I could not find could not find I had to do it on my own so I'm going to save a little bit of legwork and I'm going to show you how I figured that all out and how it helped with this okay so come back and we're going to talk about configurations and more about punches okay hang on okay so now let's settle in and let's talk about configurations of punches the size of punches and what will fit in these bags and what won't because when I was looking at this product over a year ago this was the one thing I wanted to know because I couldn't go to a store and buy it I had to know in my brain what I needed before I went and ordered anything and I didn't want to order something and then have to send it back no 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 so I'm just going to show some configurations because we all have different types of punches and I think I pretty much have a variety of punches and I want to give a visual what will work and what will not work in these totally Tiffany punches packs if you're interested in this product because I know this was something I wanted to see and I couldn't find it okay so I'm just gonna show okay so some of the biggest punches I think I do have as far as width is my mini eight punches and these are by we are memory keepers so you can see now this is the two inch okay and that is what I'm basically going to talk about is the two inch and then also the one inch so my suggestion is is when you are working with punches and if you want to go by categories rather than size I personally would skip the one and a half. That's just my opinion, okay? But I'm going to show a little bit of everything, and this will be lengthy <laughs> because I truly, I have every, basically every punch I own sitting around me, and I have already tripped on the floor. Yes, I did. I tripped already. <laughs> and the thing is, I had a cup of tea in my hand, and so that would not have been a pretty picture, but okay, let's get cracking. So with these uh, mini eight punches, these are honking. These are big, and so you're going to get two in here. Okay, but I want to show that they will fit in the bag because it's one thing to fit in a tray, but how's it going to look in the bag? And now just pretend that you were going to put other things in here. I just want to show, okay, and you're going to hear a lot of clanging, a lot of banging. Who knows what else we'll get into, <laughs> But, like I said, this was the video that I wanted to see. I needed to see this, okay, when it came to organizing punches, and I just couldn't find it. Okay, so you see, that is a big punch. 
and it's kind of got some width to it and that fits in just fine for this two inch punch pack okay now you certainly just wouldn't want to put two in there but three will not fit i had four of these okay and so i knew right into the hat box they were going to have to go because that's just uh ten dollars and fifty cents is too much to house these punches for me it just is okay that's just me okay so i'm gonna put those away now let's talk about another punch and that's going to be these Fisker's ed edge punches because if you're a long time scrapper you have them we love them and we're not going to purge them no 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 okay so i wanted to show because i remember i had already did all these configurations uh, some time ago and i'm going to talk about how to start doing this right now i just want to show you the actual punch from the manufacturer and how many will fit in this two inch because it doesn't matter if you buy the one inch the one and a half or two your format is still going to be the same it's still going to be the size of a tray okay it's just the depth that's going to be changed okay so let's see how many fiskers edgers we get in here now i did not go this right for my fiskers edgers because i knew my hat box was going to have to remain as punch storage and this is where I have them and it works very well okay so how many am I getting in here and we're just gonna play and that's why I put this at the end of the video because I know not everybody wants to know this but I wanted to know it I'm a visual person I needed to know how many bags I needed and I wanted to know what was gonna fit and what doesn't before I started ordering anything okay so this is three four five six seven that's not bad seven okay well now we have some empty space here okay but seven fiskers that's pretty dang nifty and you can see what all they are so love that okay but it doesn't matter if you do a catalog doesn't matter okay so this will not fit this way okay i already know that and that's all the fiskers i have as far as that but you could definitely come over and turn this over and it would fit that way if you wanted to because you know if you have a catalog you don't need to see this okay you're not going to see it on your shelf anyways and then you'd have this extra space uh let's see you could probably get let's see if one of these paper shapers well that could kind of fit yeah yeah you could get a couple of them in there i wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily want that so you basically could consider that maybe a little bit of Oh, you could get something in there. Okay, I'm just giving a visual, okay? But that that's what a Fisker's edge punch would look like. Let me move this just for a minute. I just don't want to forget that. It's the one-inch tray. Okay, so that's what that would look like, okay? So now let me put those away. And what should we work on next? How about these Martha Stewart punches, okay? Let's try them, okay? Because we all have those too. Okay. And then... I'm going to show you, if you want to think about this type of storage system, how you can go about it easily before you order anything, okay? Because that is what I literally had to sit down, I had to, con I had to get all my punches out, and then I had to configure what was going to go in what tray. That's what I had to do, okay? You say, well, how are you going to do that before you had a tray? I'm going to show you about that. Absolutely. Okay, so that's Fiskars. Okay, so now let's try these Martha Stewart's. Now, in the video earlier, I had showed that there's two different ways you can do these Martha Stewart punches. Isn't this beautiful jade eye green? Oh, mint green. Love that. Okay. So, you can, uh, you can get, you could, you could get six across. Okay. But you're not going to get six across on this way. So, you would alternate the handles and that's how you would do that. Okay. So, that would be what? That's 11. Okay. Yeah, but you could get another type of punch in there if you wanted to. Okay, so that is 11 of the Martha Stewart's. Okay, and so, yeah, works very well. 11 of those Martha Stewart's. Okay, now you also, when you do these, and I want to show what that looks like in the bag, because this is what I wanted to know. <laughs> I wanted to say, yeah, it fits in the tray, but how does it fit in the bag? Well, we're just going to show that. Okay, that's 11 punches. Oh, I love that. Look at that. Look how easily that goes in there. Look at that. Now, your Velcro might not line up completely, but as long as the majority's on there, you're going to be fine. That's 11. That's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, 11 of them. That's what fits in that tray, okay? Now, this is a 2-inch, okay? And so, that's going to accommodate. Now, we also can configure this another way, okay? So, that's what it looks like in the bag. You can also put them this way, Okay? I don't think you get as many in there because this is a wider surface 
than this, okay? So if you're going with just this punch, not, you know, if you're just going by shape, you know, punch shape size, this is what I would do, okay? But, you know, for me, as I showed earlier, I went by groupings. I did not want by size because I don't want to pull out four punch bags to get the two bunches I want. I didn't want that. Okay, so that is 11 of those. Okay, so now I move these. Beautiful little lovelies. What are we going to try next? Well, in front of me, I have some of those Fisker squeeze punches. So let's try that. Okay, sorry for the clanging and the banging. But if you're like me and you want to see things, you don't care. You just want to see what's going to work and what's not going to work. So let's work with these Fisker squeeze punches and let's see. Say if you're just definitely going to go by shape, you know, punch size. Okay, so let's play with these. Now some of these, sometimes you can stack them. I'm just going to grab what I have. And I'm looking and I think that is all the squeeze I have. Yes, that's the squeeze I have. Okay. So let's see, and this is one of those things where you have to simply just play around with these handles. Okay, so we're just playing here to see what, what will work and what won't. Okay, so that was about six. I could get that seven in there. So six or seven, of course, I have different sizes. Okay, but this is what four of the bigger, the extra large looks like. Okay, and I do know with these Fisker squeeze, you want to make sure you alternate these handles. See how they're alternating in between each other? That's how to maximize your space, okay? So that's four right there, but you could get some other ones in there. You just have to maneuver them around a little bit, okay? So that's the Fisker squeeze punches, okay? So now let's go to the whale of a punch. Yeah. <laughs> do they still even sell them? I don't know. Maybe this is a Stampin' Up! one. Maybe they still do. I don't know. But I love having my circle punches. Uh, with this type of handle, you just squeeze that, that, yeah, I like that. Like, really like those. Okay. And I honestly think this heart, well, the punch, I think that was one of my first ones that I ever bought. I remember going to AC Moore with a coupon, thought I was big cheese. I was getting a big old punch. Yes, I did. <laughs> okay. So this is the whale of the punch. And these are all the same size. And so right there are six. So there you see, six went in there, no problem whatsoever, okay? So that's the whale of the punch. Okay, so what should we go with next? How about, let's go with these EK Success Edge Punches, and these are the big jobbies, okay? Not the little ones, these are the big ones. So let's work on that, okay? Now I'm just putting these in another space, because I really don't want to trip again. No. And I want to tell you how special all of you are. But I took every punch out of my bags, out of my organization, <laughs> to do this video. <laughs> yes, I did. Because I didn't want to have to keep opening bags so you could get a visual. Okay. So I have four of these. Now, these will not go side by side. You can see. They're not going to go side by side. But you can definitely put them this way. Okay. Now, remember, I've been playing with these for months. Okay. And so, you're not going to really get four in that platform. Ooh, yeah, so you're not going to get four in that platform, but they will not stack on one another. However, you can take these and you can stack one of the, well, no, not those. Oh, uh, where are those at? Oh, you could take one of these, these thinner ones, and they will stack on top of that and they will go in the bag because I have, I showed that in my, I think it was number nine. I showed that. So with these bigger ones, you're not going to get four. You're just not. There's just... Well, yes, you could. There you go. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, you can get some of those in there. Or, okay, so there's four. So I guess, you, oh, well, there you go. There's even more. Now, what about a Martha Stewart punch? Well, there's a Martha Stewart punch. That'll fit there. Could we get another one in? Well, that's, that's a fit and a half, but it would work. Let's try something else. Let's try some of these McGill punches because we always have those. Well, there we go. There's another visual, okay? Now, these are the uh, the wider EK Success edge punches, not these small ones. That's the difference, okay? That's the bigger ones. So I got four in there, a Martha Stewart, and two McGills, okay? So that gives you a visual on that, okay? Because I know sometimes on the videos that I see that uh, uh, Totally Tiffany products have, it's just basically, it looks like so many fit in. Well, that's with the little punches, but with these big ones, 
I wanted to know what was going to fit and what didn't. Okay, so that's that. So now let's work with these smaller ones. Let's see how many will fit in there. Okay, let's work with those. I guess I should keep a couple of those out in case you wanted to see if you wanted to do both of them. Okay, I tell you what, some of these punches, oh, I think if I had to get rid of any punch, it would be this one because I had showed when I was on the catalog, this one didn't punch so easy for me. And that's, uh, it is so heavy. I just, I don't like it. I just don't like it, like it. Okay, so that is, that that is one of the large one. And then these are the shaped ones. However, when you go with these slimmer ones, okay, these are the EK success, but they're the slim ones. Okay. Now they can stack very nice in a photo box. I'm just going to say that I did that at one time, but the one inch works for that. If you just wanted to do like if say, if this is one of the type of punches you had a lot of, they will fit in the one inch. You do not need a two inch for these slim ones. A one inch will work just fine. Okay. So you can see in this one that I have five in this tray. And those were the slim ones. And of course you can see some were bigger and some were smaller. Let me just move that. Okay. So that's just the one inch. Okay. See, they're all the same size. It's just the depth that is different. This is the one inch, but these EK success slim ones will fit in the one inch. Those are the only ones I have found that'll fit in this one inch other than those tiny little ones. Okay. But I'll talk about that in just a minute. Okay. So let me just see. Let me move this up. Okay, let me see how many of these smaller ones. Let's see if we can work all the same. Okay, well, they're not going to go this way. Oh, I only have three of those. Ugh. Well, there we go. Let's try this one. Okay, so there's about the same. I couldn't get two in there. Okay, so uh, basically five of those in that large size would fit in there. Okay. Let's try these smaller ones. Okay, we can get three in there, so that'd be six. Probably about seven of these smaller ones will fit in there. Okay. So now what else are we working at? <laughs> okay, now let's talk about EK Success again, where we're going to talk more about these uh, slim ones. We're going to talk about them. Let me move these. Okay. Might as well just move all of this. Oh, I need that. I told you we're going to be clanging and banging. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we're going to talk about these uh, edge punches because I know we have a lot of those. Okay. Oh, I have my work cut out. I got to put all these back. Ugh. Oh, well, that's better than housework. <laughs> yes. Okay. So now let's talk about, let me move my tray here because this is what I want to talk about when we start figuring out. Okay, let me move these for a minute. And when I say I had these labeled, that's what I mean. See, right there. I have a number two there. Okay. So, in this one, this is where I have a lot of those EK Success punches. Okay. And then I had two of those big ones, and I had two small ones on top of it. So, that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and I could get twelve in there. So, that's on those edge punches. There's twelve in that, and they fit in the bag just fine. Yes. Now, you will have some shifting, but they don't shift a lot. Okay. But that is just something you have to consider. Okay. So, that's that. Okay, so now what do we want to talk next? How about we talk about the ones that come from Hobby Lobby and that type of thing? Okay, let's talk about that. Okay, I'll just move this. Okay, now this is what I would say. They're large punches. They're not medium punches. I would say these are these are large. Okay, and so what do we have here? We have everything from Imagine These to Paper Studio to uh, this Paper Studio, McGill Paper Studio, Fiskers, and American Crafts. Okay, so you can somehow, you know, you can rework these, and sometimes if you put them on the side, you can get a better configuration. Okay, it's just a matter of playing. Okay, I'm just, see, I'm just playing, playing, playing. Okay, but how many is that? Okay, I can put that on the side, give me a little bit of wiggle room, and that would work if I wanted it. Some of these, you just can't put on the side because look, look how wide that would be. They would have to stand. Okay, I'm just playing, playing, playing. Okay, there we go. Okay, still had another little space in there if you wanted to get another little McGill. 
you want it to do that. So how many is that? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and that's that's the larger ones. But these are the odd shaped ones from you know, like I said, Paper Studio and that type of thing. Probably getting a glare. Okay, so I want to show a visual on that. Yes, these are big too, but they fit in nice because you know it's a square going into a rectangle, so that fits very well. So I want to show a visual on that. Okay, so what do we have left? I think the only thing we have left is, well, we have two more groups, so might as well keep on cracking. Hold on. <laughs> I hope this is helpful because, like I said, this is what I wanted to see. Meh. Oh, uh, last year, I wanted to see how many could I get in there, and because I knew I was not going to go, I was not going to go by sh uh, size. Okay, I want it to go by categories. So now you can definitely see the smaller the punch, of course, the more you're going to get in. And again, this is a two inch size. Okay, now I think that Tiffany shows in with these smaller ones. Oh, I don't know. She'd probably have to use a one and a half, but these smaller ones. Okay, you're definitely, you may have a ton of these. The one inch would be all you need. Okay, and let's just put some in a row and see how many would be in a row. I'm sorry, I changed gears there a minute. That's okay. This is very informal. Okay, we're going to just see how many we can get lined up here. And I'll put this more in frame here in just a minute. Okay, and sometimes if you alternate, you can get more in there. Oh, yeah, let's alternate. If you alternate your handles, can you see what I'm doing? If you alternate your handles, sometimes you can get more in there. Okay, do I have another one? No, but this will fit. Okay, you see what I'm saying? Well, that'd go on the side. Okay. So there's six in a row. Okay. And then we have these little ones. And these are not going to go in your one inch. No. Okay, you see the difference in those? But say you have a lot of these paper shapers. Okay. Or these little, little ones. Okay. So you're going to get six. And how many can we get in a row? Okay, four. Uh, I would say about 26 of these you could get in there. Okay? Now, I only have two of those, so you just get a visual. Okay? But these little ones, yeah. Yeah, there's six. And then I'd say you get bay five. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. 24, 25, 26, 27. I'd say by 28 of these little paper shapers you could get in this one inch tray. That's my estimate, okay? But you can't go much bigger than those uh, paper shapers for that one inch. And of course, these little ones from American Crafts, okay? So that's a visual on that, okay? So then let's go to these ones, okay? I need that again, so I, that can't go too far for me. Okay, so now these are what I would say medium punches, but I still think they fit better in the two inch rather than the one and a half. So I am so glad because when I originally was going to order these, I was going to order three one inch, three one and a half, and three two inch. And then I just kept, I couldn't, I just could not hit that buy button until I knew for sure what I needed. And I'm so glad because I did not need a single one and a half, okay? And I only used one one inch, okay? And that's only because I had it, okay? So of these medium shapes, what do we have? We have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, maybe 17. So 16, 17. And of course, you know, you can get these little ones in there too. Okay. And with these little ones in this two inch, you honestly sometimes can get away from st with stacking them. Okay. That's just the way they fit. So there's a visual. And we have from McGill, American Crafts, EK Success. Uh, let's see what else. We are Memory Keepers. Yeah, basically Teresa Collins. Well, that's Fiskers and that type of thing. Okay, so that's about 16 of those. Okay, so now let's talk about these from Martha Stewart. Okay, let's talk about those. Okay, now I just did not entertain them going in here because I just knew <laughs> they weren't gonna they were gonna take up a lot of space. Okay. And if you want to see more of like the configurations, go to the first part where I was showing my actual individual punch bags, and that'll help a little bit more, okay? Now with these, the reason why you can't get a lot in here is because the, the, you can't, you see what I'm saying, with the Fiskers, you can, what's that word, um, squeeze them together. <laughs> you can, oh, what's that word? Oh, someone yell. <laughs> what is that word? <gasps> interlock something okay you, you just can't um stack them very well see they won't go in with the, each other 
No. And so you're only going to get, what is that, three? Four, yeah, five. And then maybe if you had something smaller. Eh, I don't know. I just knew these ones that don't bend, it's just not an option for this bag. Because you're only going to get a few in there. Okay? I mean, if you only had four or five of these, well, let's just keep playing. We'll see what we come up with. Okay, there you go. Well, then that's not bad. That's not bad at all. No, that one's on top of each other. Let's see how that goes in a bag. Okay? So I hope you don't mind me rambling. I hope you don't mind me showing. Because we all have different punches. We all own different punches. That's the problem. Okay, let me get this in here. I want to see if that handle gets hung up. Well, I guess it would help if I had the right bag with the right... That's my one inch. That won't work. No. That's like putting a, a square in a circle. That's not going to work. Okay. See what I'm saying with this two inch? You just can't go wrong with this two inch. Look how easy that goes in there. Okay. So that was four of those, the edge ones that don't bend, and three of those. Okay, so that's not bad. That's seven. That's t that's not too bad. Okay, and you could honestly, you could get in some smaller ones if you wanted to uh, intermingle. You see what I'm saying? There's still some space in there. You could definitely get a few more in there. You know, just squeeze them in there. Okay, now how many we got in there? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, see, there's space here, space here, space there. So there you go. There's an option. Okay, again, this is a two inch. Can't recommend that one enough. I'm so glad I did my leg work before I ordered. Cause like I said, I had to I had to wait till they were on sale and I wanted to know exactly what I needed. And then I kept an eye out for those sales. Okay, so now let's talk about the Martha Stewart ones that do bend, okay? Because I do have three of those, okay? Now I did a lot of talking, so let me pause and I'll come right back. Okay, so now let's try the Martha Stewart ones that do bend, and I wish in, a, in the beginning they all were like that, because, man, <laughs> talk about a better storage system. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, now these don't bend, and so you can see these go much easier, okay? And so then, again, it's just basically just figuring out which way they'll go. So there's three, okay, and that's all I have is three of those. So I'd say three, four, five... I'd say seven or eight of those that would work, okay? Maybe even nine if you stretch it. And then, of course, you'd have some empty space where you could put in those smaller ones, okay? So if you're definitely not just going by a certain manufacturer and you're going by size, you can definitely get more in there. It's just a matter of playing, okay? So that is that. And let's talk about these honking ones. That's what we're going to talk about next. Okay. Now, you know what I'm supposed to be doing right now. You want to know the truth? I'm supposed to be making dinner. No, I'm back here playing with punches. Oh, well. Dinner will get on the table when dinner gets on the table. Okay, so now here are these Honka Mega Gills. Mega Gills. McGills. Okay, I'm trying to see which other ones I have. I think I have... I don't think I have about four of these in total. Because they just were... I think this is probably my uh, one of my favorite punches. Okay, but then I also have this tag punch. Okay, so let's try that. So you can see right there, and this uh, this is by Paper Studio Hobby Lobby. This is a very nice punch. You can get three different tags. Uh, get it for ten dollars. Yes. Okay, so that is that big ticket punch uh, from not ticket. I'm sorry, label punch from McGill. And then you can get these, so you'd have room for one more. So that's about six of those big ones. Okay. Now let's talk about. Oh. Let's do we do we go there? <laughs> okay, we're gonna go there. Let's talk about one more category, and that is the honking, and I mean honking, Martha Stewart punches. <laughs> because you know, Martha Stewart's got to go big or go home, right? Okay, that's that's Martha Stewart. So we're gonna talk about these because they are mega, 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 mega. I'm sorry, just give me a minute because I don't want to trip over anything. I have to have a pathway because I want to talk about one more thing after I'm done with this. Okay. So I'm just pulling some of these because you're going to see 
that uh, Miss Martha is going to have some punches. And I'm just going to put these here so you can just, there's some eye candy there for a minute. I don't want to hit my camera. I have a few of these on a shelf because they're just, well, they're in a league of their own. Okay, so here we go. So the last category we're going to talk about is the ones that don't fit. Okay? Well, I'll say this for a minute. This is a, still a large Martha Stewart punch, but this isn't as big as this. I don't know if you can see the, the difference. Can you see the difference? Well, I'll put it this way. See how this one has way more height. The one on the left has is much, much higher. Okay? That is not going to fit in any of these punch bags. So forget that. Okay? But these will fit in. Okay, now I only have, well, there you go. I only have two of them. So when I was considering this, when I was on my configurations, I thought if they fit, they fit. If they don't, they don't. Okay, because I'll show you the ones that just don't work. Okay, and so I only have two of these that size, and I was just, no, I'm sorry. I have three that size. Okay, and there was just no way... And actually, you know what, I, I want to, before I say something, I want to make sure I'm right. I'm going to get a bag to see if they actually do fit. Okay? Because I want to make sure I give the right information. Oh, wow, do I have punches sitting around. Ooh. <laughs> okay. I want to make sure they fit in this bag. Okay, they're still the extra large, but they're the folding extra large. But they're not big as those other ones. Oh, yes, they go in there no problem whatsoever. Even with that handle up, no problem whatsoever. Okay, so I only have three of these, and I was not willing to buy another bag just for these three punches. I just wasn't going to, okay? Maybe down the road if I add more of this size, but this size is really, it's just tough to house, and so I try to stay away from it. But I was not going to spend $10.50 just to organize three of these, okay? Now, if I had other ones that I needed to fill in, Maybe down the road I can consider that. But I put these with my other ones that do not fit. Okay, so let's talk about that. So how many of those could you get in? Uh, well, let's see if you can figure that. Oh, they're going to go side by side. So there would be four. I would say you could get five in there. Maybe. Let's see. No. See, it won't go. I would say four and then something else. Maybe a couple of those. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say four of these ones. You know, because they the wings, look how big that is. Okay. But it's not as big as the enchiladas. Okay. I mean, look at the difference. Ugh. And you know what? Honestly, when you're ordering things online, which is basically what I do, I don't know if they're going to come this size or that size. I just don't know. It's a crapshoot. You just don't know. That's why it's good sometimes to buy punches in person. So you're going to get four of these, of these, of this size, and maybe two of these in this bag. I just wasn't willing to spend ten dollars and fifty cents for these three. So that's why I didn't. That was the only reason. Okay. Now let's talk about this other size. That is a problem child. There's two that's a problem child. And that is these ones that also have wings. <laughs> okay. I mean, that, that's a big punch. It just will not fit in this system. Okay. And how many do I have of those? I got everything sitting around. I'm sorry. Now, where are they at? Oh, I have two of these. Okay. Now, if these two would have fit in a bag with these other three, I would have considered it. But there's no way this is going to fit in a bag. So, again... I'm not going to spend $10.50 to house three, three punches. So these I knew were not going to fit. So I knew they were going to go on one of my little cubby holes in my a hutch desk. And so that's where they go. So when it comes to organizing punches, if you get into these bigger Martha Stewart ones, and I think on the market, I think she's got the bigger punches of anybody that I think's out there. Okay. And they're beautiful punches. And of course, this is basically two punches in one because you turn the button and it makes two different designs. Okay. That's why it's so big. And so there are just some punches that's not going to fit. So you have to take that in consideration when you are configuring what's going to work in a tray, what's not going to work in a tray, what's going to work in a box or a bag, a bag or a bin there's just some that won't fit so where is your 
what do I want to say? What is your second option that, or your uh, plan B? Okay. So I knew my plan B was going to have to be on a shelf and I only have a few punches, this and these that have to fit on that shelf. So I, that's five. That's not no big deal. Okay. And plus the writing about, and they can also fit in that hat box and I can cycle them anytime I want to. So that was my plan B. Okay. So then the last problem child are the I don't even know what you want to call these. I would say, what, these are the Lamborghinis? <laughs> the Lamborghini when it comes to punches? Yes, these are quite big. They're quite heavy. They punch like butter, though. I mean, yes. So these will not fit in these trays. Uh, if I, They do fit in my hat box, of course, but they take up a lot of space. So, again, I have these four punches, and I knew I was going to have to come up with a plan B. So, again, they just sit on one of my shelves, and that's the only option. Uh, even uh, baskets and bins. I mean, so when if you have these on a shelf and you only have four, okay, and for the way I have it is I have them that I can actually just pull one at a time. They're not stacked or anything like that. So that's what I had to do, okay? They're just too big. There's no sense buying a basket or a bin for them because you're going to spend more money. You could have just bought another punch for the, the amount you're going to pay for that container. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So they're just they're just the big ones. This, yeah. Like I said, they're the Lamborghinis. Yes. So that is the different configurations and what I wanted to see when I was researching all that. And if that was a bunch of rambling, um, it, I, I'm sorry about that, but I did want to show that because when you're sitting there and you're thinking, do I want three, one inch, do I want four, two inch, or, you know, you have to know what, it, what's the configurations going to be. Okay. And then I also have these two. Okay. Now I'm wondering if they would fit. No, they won't. See, again, they won't fit in that. So I just was left. Yeah. So I have, how many do I have that did not fit? Okay. Now again, these would fit in that hat box that I showed in the beginning. Okay. But if I would take those, and I think there's how many? Uh, let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight, about nine of these Martha Stewart punches. And they, and I'm, I'm definitely not going to purge them because I want them. So I just had to come with a plan B. And so these nine, uh, are sitting on a shelf and they're also I use them as a decorative element and so that's my excuse yeah I just I'm not gonna put them in that hat box and then the the positive is is that they're on a shelf they're visible so that it reminds me that I they're just grab and go and then also too I can cycle them out with things that are in the hat box so that was just my plan B these are the ones that just won't fit and that's sometimes what you happen and you know that if you've done any type of organization especially with punches there's just not one container there is no container that will fit every punch you own it just does not exist <laughs> no I gave up on that but I found a close in the running with those uh, totally Tiffany punch bags okay so I'm gonna pause here for a minute and then we're gonna come back and I want to show you an inexpensive way of how you can try try to figure out these configurations without before you buy anything else okay well you have to buy one thing but you know just hang on there I'll talk about that Okay, so now let's talk about the last thing I wanted to talk about when it comes to figuring out how much, you know, what container you need for the punches you have. Well, first of all, you need to decide, are you going to go by size of your punches or are you going to go by categories, okay? And it really is a preference. There's no wrong way to do that, okay? So I had recently showed this ruler date stamp video, and so, of course, in that is a one-inch tray, okay? Now, this was something I had found at Hobby Lobby one day, and, of course, with a coupon, it wasn't even, it was around $4, okay? Okay. If the, you can get them on sale because it's originally $8. Use a coupon or if they have half off, you know, storage, you can get it for $4. So what I decided to do was, is that one day in my travels, I decided to bring one of these home. And so this tray is the same size, regardless if you're buying the one inch the one and a half or the two. Okay. It's just the size, the sides or the depth that's going to be different. So I bought one of these and one day I sat down on the floor and I had every punch around me. Okay. And I wanted to see how I was going to figure out these configurations because I knew I wanted to go by categories. And so what you can do if before you order, you know, put in a big order or before you decide on what size you need, just get one of these one inch trays because you with what I just showed, you'll see, you already know what's going to fit. Every punch basically fits until you get into the bigger, bigger, monstrous Lamborghini 
Martha Stewart ones. Okay. They just won't fit. Okay. And that is the big ones. Okay. And so, but every other punch basically fits. I mean, even those mini eight punches fit in here. Okay. It's just those bigger Martha Stewart punches. Okay. And you know, they're big, big. Okay. So what you can do is just get yourself one of these trays. Okay. And then someone would say, well, you could just use an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. No, you need a tray. Okay. And go with what you can get cheap. I got this for around $4, four twenty-five, something like that. And then you simply sit and you have every punch around you. And then if you want to go by categories, your next step would be is that when you're sitting on the floor, okay, or your desk, wherever, dining room table, you put your punches in categories, all your hearts, all your butterflies, all your banners, all of your um, florals, all of your stars, that type of thing. Put them in categories of how you would want to use them when you sat down to actually scrapbook, card make, craft, however, okay? But now if you purely want to go by shape, you can look at what I already showed and that will help you determine how many you need. And I would suggest, unless you're doing these small things, you're going to need a two inch. That's just my suggestion. Okay. Or if you just have these slim lines, not that one, these slim lines, you can get away with a one, one inch, but for the majority of our punches, it's going to be this two inch, that two inch size right here. Okay. So, so that is what I did one day. I sat down on the floor. I put my punches in categories. I put my circles together, my hearts together and my edge punches together. And then I did it exact opposite of what we normally do. Instead of just buying the container and making it fit, I took my punches and figured out my containers. And that's what I simply did. And I wanted to show this because I think that really helped me save money because everything I bought fits exactly the way I wanted it because I did my configurations first. And again, I just used this one inch tray, even though I knew they weren't going to fit in this as far as the depth I was going with the two inches okay but then I figured it all out snap that photo that was a big thing for me I snapped a photo and then a few months later when I got to order and my order came in I knew exactly what punch was going in what bag and then you can do your catalog from that okay so I wanted to share that little tip because you know it, I just struggled with that and it took me a while to figure this out okay this was months in the making so if I can save a few uh, short steps and if I can save a few months off you figuring out how to organize your punches that's what I wanted to do so again I hope this was video was helpful I know it was quite lengthy but when I was organizing punches if you would have saw how many punch videos I tried to find and also watch to figure out what I needed yeah, I wouldn't have cared because I wanted to figure this out. Okay. And so I cannot recommend these punch bags by Totally Tiffany. I can't recommend them enough. And then how many do I have sitting on? I just have a regular bookcase and I have nine of these two inch and then I have two of the one inch. So that's 11 punch bags that fit on a normal bookcase. And that just gives you a visual. Okay. So I will have a couple photos at the end if you want to just see a little bit of close ups, that type of thing. But if there's anything I didn't answer or anything you want to know about these punch bags, you know, just ask a question. If you have a certain way of you uh, that you are loving how you organize your punches uh, and it's affordable, uh, please share below so we can learn too. And also if you have any questions about a Totally Tiffany product, just pick up the phone and call them. They are more more than willing to help. Just a great setup over there. Okay, so that's all I have for organizing punches and punches and punches. We talked about a lot of punch stuff today. Yes, okay, so that is all I have. And you know, come back to RTS because you never know what we're going to learn. Bye.